Welcome to episode 5 of our Gip River Road Adventure. If you just tuned in and want to see how we started this trip, just click the link in the top right corner. We are heading further along the windy roads of the Kimberleys till we see the Coburn Ranges that rise 600 metres above the surrounding plains. In front of us you can just see our destination today, the Pentecost River. to the Pentecost River. We've already set up here. Uh, this is the Pentecost River just below the crossing. The Pentecost Crossing, one of the most photographed and filmed places on the whole of Gib River. These campsites here are all free. They're on level ground. Uh, it does get pretty busy here in the afternoon, but in the morning usually everyone buggers off and you've got the place to yourself. We're about to get my fishing gear out and I have a feeling I'm going to catch this elusive barra that's swimming around out here. Now there is a couple of crocs we spotted earlier today. Again, there is no swimming. It is salt water, so there could be salties in here as well. Uh, I have heard that a person got taken a bit further downstream, I think last year. So we don't want to risk it. We are going to get some bait first, some life baits. I reckon they work best. We're going to flick a few lures and then uh, hopefully we'll catch some lunch. It's a sunny day, we got some time to stay. Hey, 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 there are things okay. It's a sunny day, we got some time to stay. Hey, hey, hey. Mangrove Jack, second one, one day. Most people probably skip this spot and head straight to Equestro Station, which is only an hour's drive away from here. Believe me when I say you would be missing out. We stayed here for almost a week and really enjoyed this place. Although I still haven't caught a barrier yet, the sunsets here are amazing. And if you have a tinny, you can explore further downstream or like me, just sit and wait for the fish to bite. There is no place to get fresh water anywhere close here, so you will need to be fully self-sufficient. bread's made in the camp oven and it is delicious. Although we made it last night, when it comes out of the oven, it can't beat but to eat some of it. Look at this, so nice. Thank you. Crunchy. Just with the butter and jam. That's it. Done for my breakfast. Perfect life of white bread. Okay. Give it a go, it's not hard. Make it, takes about three hours, four hours. The process. Maybe the whole process is about four hours, whereas a lot of it, a lot of it is just waiting for it to rise. And mm. We'll make a video one day. I'll show you how I make these breads. Anyway. These campsites here are really nice. Mm. You're close to the water for a change. Mm -hmm. Although you can't swim in there, you can still 
Are you fishing off the shoreline or just put your feet in there? And I spot the cock, the clock. Yeah, we did spot a very big croc. Jenny spotted it actually. Yeah. Very good at spotting. And I named him Mr. Ken. <laughs> One of our friends in Thailand have a crocodile. His name is Mr. Ken, so that's remind me. I named him Mr. Ken as well. The croc. Alright, that's it for the Pentecost River campsite. We've packed up, ready to leave for El Cresto this morning. Then there is the Pentecost River crossing. And behind that is 1,200 kilometers of corrugated hill. That's what we've done in our vehicle so far. I've checked it's 1,200 something kilometers. That is give and take a few um, surveys in and out of the bush. I think all up it is about 650 kilometers if you drive straight from Derby to Kalanara, if I'm not mistaken. Um, like I said, most of it was terrible, terrible corrugated right. Now, after the Pentecost, we come to this. Freshly made bitumen. How good is that? Well, I don't know how good it actually is for the Gibb River right, because the more easy it is to access, the more people will actually travel this area, and the more trash it will unfortunately get one day. So I'm glad we did it this time. I hope this is the end of the bitumen or the start of it, however you want to see it. Although I hate the corrugation, it does make it more difficult for those people who are not used to going out of the bush, I suppose, to go uh, through Gibb River Road and make it a bit more adventurous. That's what the Gibb River Road is all about in the end. Anyway, we'll enjoy a cruisy ride now to El Cresto and check that place out and I'll see you there. After reaching the sealed road, we are full steam ahead to El Cuestro, which will be our next base camp from where we will hike to all the gorges and springs that are on the station. Now's the time to give us a thumbs up guys and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. It helps our channel grow and gives us the opportunity to make more videos in the future. Once you get to the turn off at El Cuestro, it's back to dust, dirt and creek crossings. To get to the campground you will need to cross at least one creek, so do come prepared. So we just arrived at El Cuestro Station and we scored ourselves this awesome spot. Check this out. I don't know how the hell we managed to get this site. How cool is this? It's right by the creek. Baffled. Everyone else is sort of set up like sardines up on the main campground. And we just drove in here to have a look and then we boom, we found this. Far out. Can you get any better than that? Jenny, what do you reckon? Love it. <laughs> this is awesome, mate. This is fantastic. It's like a private area as well for our yeah. anyone. This, uh, literally, the next campsite is like 50 meters away. And that's a caravan park, you know. Your own driveway on the well, Check this out, that's the next site there. And your own driveway on the side. Yeah. No one can <laughs> that's amazing. So, El Cuestro is owned by Discovery Park, so it is a larger group. Um, they own caravan parks all around the country, one of them being in Broome actually. Um, and we're on the Black Cockatoo Campground, which is the main campground. They have powered and unpowered sites. Yeah, there's lots, lots of trees, lots of shade around here, which is not always good when you have unpowered site. So, but you can run the generator here, so. Yeah. These other spots are not bad either. Yeah. There's a couple of good spots here. 
that's the rest over there so yeah they're really shady if you're out in the swag this is the place to be i reckon this is the most shadiest spot i've seen on the on the gib so yeah it's a world of difference here at el Cuestro. a bit more civilized but then we've got a bitumen road <laughs> right in front of it hey this view is a gold man i can't believe it stoked with this side <laughs> The campground has two restaurants, a well-stocked bar and plenty of space to let the kids run amok or swim in the creek while you enjoy a few sneaky cold ones at the watering hole. Although fuel is available here, the general store only sells souvenirs and drinks. There was no place to restock the pantry unfortunately. The staff here though was great and the campground amenities were in top shape. To make it short, El Cuestro Station is an amazing place that should be on everyone's bucket list. here at Sabadi Springs this morning um, apparently a really beautiful uh, spring fed little creek let's go and check it out wow it's so beautiful the first day we walk in We are finally alive at the Sendering Spring. Sabi, Sabi. Speeding. Sabi. Sabi. Mm. Speed Spring. The water is quite warm. Night temperature is like a bathtub at home. So good. Love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's an interesting outfit today. What? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't complain too much. This is our lunch. Mr. Craft like this one, his favorite. This is my sometime, but every time I feel out after I eat this I feel link sick. <laughs> really sick. I don't know why. The other brand's fine. Alright we're now on our walk to Emma Gorge. Another gorge that is accessible from El Crasso Station. Uh, you do need a permit for this gorge. If you're staying at El Crasso Station that'll probably be included in your stay already. If not it's $12 per person. For adult. Yeah, for an adult. I don't know how much it is for children. <laughs> Probably not much, but anyway. So it's a 1.6 kilometers uh, one way walk. So 3.2 kilometers return walk. They say allow three hours for it, which is probably about right if you stop here and there and taking a few snapshots. <laughs>
Emma Gorge, what a beautiful spot. Check this out. And there is actually a warm spring to the right of us where that lines there and warm water comes out. Uh, the general water here is a bit cool, but on the right it's superb. Jenny's first injury, oh my god, and it's a big one. <laughs> I'm thinking about using the tourniquet at the moment. <laughs> no, just the heel got a bruise. Hope you guys can see that red one. Not walk long, the other way open the skin. So better cover it now. See that? Thank you. Thank you, darling. <laughs> this will be our most important asset today as we are going to visit El Cuestro Gorge. Before we can get there though, we have to cross this. This little enlarged water crossing is about one metre deep and about 50 metres long. We have to get through there in order to get to the gorge. everyone and welcome back to yet another gorge this time we're at El Cuestro Gorge which is about a five or six kilometer track up to the uh, top waterfall or pool um, easy walk through the uh, rainforest like vegetation um, here we see lots of Livestonia palm trees dotted along the creek line very beautiful we're gonna wind our way through that gorge in the back there so come with us Stand on here. And easy for you to pop up. Pass me your backpack. Yes, boss. There is just one little pool after the other. Crystal clear water, and almost every single one has a little waterfall to it. It is so good. Yet another beautiful spot. It's like you're in a different world here. You just don't know where to look. Oh.
to the Champagne Spring. This is the longest walk at around 10 kilometers at El Castro Station. <laughs> That's one hell of a power tree, man. And it's still not as big as the one we found in Puerto Pool, though. Look at the root. It is super big, though. This is such a stunning track. Absolutely amazing and fun at the same time. Wow, that is definitely a little oasis over here. How nice. Time for a dip. <laughs> 